I have simulated hundreds of thousands of Monopoly games to see what is the chance of the game being endless. Let's see what I found out. I assume you know what Monopoly is and chances are you played it at least once in your life. As for me, having grown up in Soviet Union, I didn't have the chance to play the classic Monopoly, I played something called Business 2000 which was a creative take on classic Monopoly placed in the Soviet Union with a bit of Wild West slash Lone Shark flavor to it. Anyway, even without first-hand experience of playing classic Monopoly, I am aware of its rather dubious reputation. In various board game ratings, Monopoly scores rather low. There are countless memes making fun of Monopoly, implying that it's being little more than a mixture of excruciating boar and a friendship destroyer. One of the biggest reasons for that is that the game often seems endless. There is nothing going on, tokens just continue going round and round without anyone getting bankrupt. Is this really so? Is the game inherently designed to be endless in certain cases? If so, what's the chance of that? There is an actual research paper, often cited on the internet, that tried to answer this question. It says that about 20% or so of Monopoly games are endless. If you care to find and look through the original paper, you'd find that there is an important nuance here. The conditions being tested are rather rare. It's the game of two players who do not engage in any trading activities. But what about a much healthier setup, say four players who want and will exchange property to build more monopolies? What about then? How high is the chance that such a game ends up in a stalemate? The research paper doesn't answer this question and this is where I decided to step in. I have written a monopoly simulator in Python, it will allow me to run a bunch of simulations and test a few ideas. Let's jump into it. I'm not going to show any fancy screen recordings as I usually do, as this time I don't have any. All the simulation does is shuffle around a few variables, money, property, chance cards and so on, repeating it a few thousand times and spewing out some numbers in the end. Have a look. You see, nothing to write home about. So instead, I prepared some PPT slides. While implementing the simulator, I did cut a couple of corners of classic Monopoly rules. To put it simple, first, there are no auctions, and second, bankrupt player returns the property to the bank. That's it. The rest is standard Monopoly rules. As for the player's behavior, I've implemented what seems to be the most reasonable, which is buy all the property you land on, build houses and hotels as soon as you can, starting with the most expensive ones. Third, and the most important one, trade. Now let's use this magic machine and get us some results. Let's start with replicating the research I mentioned earlier. Two players, no trade, and I will also set other parameters to match the simulation. Here are the results. Around 11% of games would have no winner after 10,000 turns. This is not exactly the same as the paper, but this is close enough. I also drew a similar diagram of the number of games still going on versus number of turns. Again, pretty much the same picture. This is a good start. It means we're doing something right. A few things I'd like to change for future simulations though. 10,000 limit on the number of turns seems to be an overkill. Looks like the majority of games would end much earlier, before turn 100 or so. So I'd like to use a thousand turns for my simulation. In practical sense, a thousand turns is already too much if you try to imagine it in terms of real life Monopoly game. A thousand turn game will take about 17 hours. So you start at 7 in the morning and you'd end at midnight. So yeah, I'd say 1000 turns is long enough. Second, I'm going to raise the number of simulation to at least 10,000 or even more at times. It will give me better margin of error in certain cases. And most importantly, as I mentioned before, in my simulation, players can and will trade. And with exactly this, let's start our first simulation. Same two players are at the Monopoly board, but now they will be trading. How many games will end in a stalemate now? And results are in. None. That's right, if players in a two-player game are willing to trade, they are bound to have an end to their game. Now, playing a two-player Monopoly is a bit strange, don't you think? I'm not saying it cannot be fun, and as we just learned, it has to always result with a clear winner. And yet, 
I don't think this is the way the game is meant to be played. I would imagine Monopoly is supposed to be this sort of a party game thing with several participants with jokes and anecdotes, light snacks and other refreshments. I have a feeling 4 player setup is the most prevalent among casual players too. So let's see how high is the stalemate chance for 4 player game. Again players can trade and not only 2 way trade but also 3 way trade to complete their monopolies. And this is the result. About 8%, almost 1 in 12 games, will end up lacking a clear winner. I guess this is why Monopoly has a rather questionable reputation among board game enthusiasts. Let's talk about the length of the game. I'm simulating up to 1000 turns to make sure long, very long games are accounted for, but, but the reality is for the majority of games, if they do end, they end much much sooner than a 1000 turns mark. In fact, there is a graph of the number of games versus when they're ended. I had to run a bit more simulation to get a smooth curve here, but still a bit jagged. But you can clearly see here that the majority of games will end up at around 50 turn mark. The average and median are a little to the right of that, because there's a long tail of games that takes a bit longer to finish, but the peak is exactly at 48 turns. Which, by the way, is about 6 laps around the board. So far we looked at two kinds of games, two player game, because that was the game in the research paper, and at four player game, because that's the classic setup of Monopoly. So what will happen with n player game, with n being anything from 3 to 8? So how will that affect the result? Let's see. As you might have guessed, the more players you have, the bigger is the chance that you run into a stalemate. Which makes sense, players would more frequently end up with non-monopolies, uh, where all three plots are owned by different people and no one is motivated to trade. When you look at numbers, it's actually not that bad for a 4-player game. It's about 50-50 a coin toss for 6 players. With 8 players, finishing the game is less probable than not finishing the game. So I guess the bottom line is, if you want the game to be over at some point, maybe do not invite everybody at the party to join. Also, this experiment opens another part of my research. What are other factors that would affect the chance of the game being endless? What house rules will ease or aggravate the situation? I mentioned that in the beginning of the video, trade is one of the major things that affect the percentage of endless games. So just out of curiosity, what will happen if you forbid trade? In this experiment, I ran two versions of each simulation, trade allowed versus trade not allowed for 2, 4, 6 and 8 players. As expected, the percentage of games without a winner is much higher if players don't trade. It's especially noticeable for 4 player games. When everybody trades, we end up with a very reasonable 8% of stalemates. Without training though, it's 61%. So it's more likely not to have a winner than to have one. Takeaway, do trade. There are quite a few suggestions out there, so called house rules. Let's look at some of them from the standpoint of game length and the chance of having a winner. Anything that affects amount of capital players have are likely to make a difference. So speaking of capital, let's begin with the starting amount of money players have. In standard rules, players would receive $1500 each in the beginning of the game. What if we change it in either direction? Will it affect the endless less much? Let's see. Raising the starting capital will increase the time you spend playing, but not the chance of having a winner. Now, decreasing the starting capital leads to a longer game, yes, but has a higher chance to end up with a winner. Personally, I think this is an interesting idea to explore. If you calculate the total cost of all the properties on the board, it will be smaller than the total amount of money 4 players have at the starting line. So they can buy everything there is to buy, and still have some left to pay luxury tax or whatever. Which end up with a very simple winning strategy for everybody. Buy everything. Now, conversely, imagine that you only have, say, $500 to start with. This is where you will be faced with some difficult dilemmas. This is the territory of mutually exclusive alternatives. The land of Sophie's choices, if you will. I never played such a game myself, but I would imagine it would be a true battle of strategic minds. There's a set of house rules that are focused on one thing, getting more money into the system. All these rules 
macroeconomically do one thing, increase the amount of money in players' hands. We can analyze changing the amount of money going into the system and the effects of doing so by simulating of one relatively simple change, increased or decreased salary. Here are the results. Same as with the starting capital, I would imagine having a smaller amount of money to enter the game each lap would result in higher competition and ultimately more interesting game. I haven't tested it in real life, so if you ever have an experience playing with reduced starting money and or salary, let me know in the comments. And this is where I think we should stop. Now we can go and play Monopoly. And even if you are stuck on the endless one, now you know what was the chance of that and what you should have done to try to prevent it from happening. Also, one last cool thing for you to check out if you are still watching this video. You remember in the game Civilization, in the end they gave you the diagram of how your civilization developed over the years and how you measured against competitors. Similarly, we can build the same graph for a Monopoly game, measuring the net worth of players, cash plus property plus real estate. These graphs in one picture will show you the actual drama behind the game. Story of side-by-side -side competitions, underdogs rising to power, powerful struggles on the very top and tables that turn on unsuspected leader. All in those diagrams. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Next time I'm going to use this simulator to test some of the ubiquitous monopoly tips you can find online. Is it really okay to ignore utilities? Should you stop at building four houses and, and how much cash you ought to keep for emergency rent payments? See you in the next video. Bye.